it's anything goes. So I'm going to put it on the ticker to say news and rumors. So that way I know when I'm cutting it for YouTube later where to cut it off. Um, so from here on out, you, you just read us headlines and let us be jerks about it. Okay. Uh, <laughs> Roxanne Perez joins Shayna and Charlotte as the only two-time NXT Women's Champion. Thoughts on Roxy winning the gold again? I, I like her surprisingly. Yeah, I, was, yeah. I like her surprisingly as a heel. I never thought yep. like she would yep. make a good yep. heel, but yep. just her facials and everything, like I yep. really like fell in love with her in this match. Like I always liked her, but like as a heel, I fell in love with her at, in that title that title match because like her facials, everything about her, like before the match started, like she she reeled me in. Like I'm a believer in her, honestly. Like I so I'm okay with it. Yeah, I really like. Yeah, her. I'm I'm digging like. Roxy being a heel, like watch her always work baby face, like through Ring of Honor and being the underdog and, and going to NXT being the underdog. It's really cool to see how some people can work as a heel and turn out to be really. I didn't know if she would actually, it would actually Same. work out for her. Same. Yeah. I'm like, this is going to suck, dude. She's too bubbly and giggly and perky to be a like to portray that. But fuck, was I wrong? Yeah, <laughs> she flipped that. She flipped that switch, and it's like, oh, she gives big EO vibes. EO yeah. turn EO to me. It's like, yeah, we weren't yeah. expecting this. Yeah. Also, kind of reminds me when Alexa Bliss did it too, where because she had that bubbly personality and she came right. out and flipped it. Like yeah. they tried to do that yeah. with Emma, and it just didn't work. It fell flat. But yeah. Alexa Bliss was like everything she did as a heel was like just so perfect, just so right. perfect. Absolutely. Yeah. Agreed. Uh, PW Insider reports the same thing we did, that MJF has secretly signed a deal with AEW and we're will return to Jacksonville post-injury rehab. Would MJF thrive in WWE? I don't think so. Nope. I think he would get lost in the shuffle. They will I'm cut pre- the legs out of that man and he'll be a mid Carter. Pre-Triple pre H, I would totally agree with you, but he's the type of person that Triple H thrives with. Okay in the ring, great on the mic, great promo work, great mm-hmm. character work. Like, despite, like, I, I think that he would be, I know his size may be a little bit of an issue, but to me, I think him in Triple H's hands would surpass anything that he's done yeah. in his career. It's also get Paul, fair. Get Paul Heyman behind him, too. I feel like that would be, mm-hmm. he could learn, a, they could learn a lot to, or he could learn a lot from Paul Heyman. And right. also with, an, with like the Netflix thing, too. Yes. Yeah. It'll be a little yeah, bit more really loose. A little bit more angrier, a little bit more not PG. <laughs> yeah. Right, you don't have yeah. to bleep out the fox and stuff. So yeah, let him let him just go. And make him a Paul Heyman guy and him feud with CM Punk. Oh, that would be so fantastic. Uh thanks for the follow, Tara. And let's be honest. Um I feel like given who we're talking about, I can make this joke. It's WWE. We know for a fact if MJF goes to WWE, they're going to make him a Paul Heyman guy. That's what they do is they lump lump them together. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Fair. That's a fair statement. (laughs) Only you can make that joke. Well, I had to wait till MJF got brought up. So, you know. (laughs) (laughs) I needed an excuse, okay? (laughs) Lord, uh, TK and company released the all in. We already talked about this, yeah, yeah. it was not needed. Uh, no. <laughs> that, horse, that horse has been beat, yeah. Like, why are we bringing this up after eight months? Just let it's, it go, yeah. All you're gonna, all you did was just stir up fans, mm-hmm. and it got to the point where I deleted 90% of the wrestling content off of all of my social media because I just didn't want to hear people talk. Really, yeah. all it did was fuck his own, make his own fans and, and diehards turn against him because we already knew. The WWE uh, sec was going to be on CM Punk's side. But I saw more, like even Kyle, who is the, I call him Tony Stan. You know what I'm saying? Like, all he needs, if he had hair, he could bleach it blonde for AW. And even he was like, I, this, this left a bad taste in my mouth. And if it yep. did that to Kyle, who is literally has fucking a picture of Tony Khan's nuts tattooed on his back. Like, <laughs> he does. He does. It's yeah. a fact. He's, he will tell you he's an AEW show. <laughs> like, At least he's honest about it. Jax will tell you, like, Kyle, oh, no, he literally looked like somebody beat his dog. Like, he was 
he was oh, blatantly no. sad about it. You know what I'm saying? Like, I oh, think that no. backfired more than it did anything. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it hurt way more than it did good. I will say it did do good for Jungle Boy, so. Oh, Dude, yeah. Jack Perry is over a F, yep. man. Dude. And Chicago. Yeah. That, like, the fact that it was in Chicago. Yeah. The Crimea yeah. River chant and then yes. them losing their shit when he tried to do the go to sleep. Yep. I was like, yeah. That's amazing. That's uh, amazing, guys. Speaking of Jack Perry in Chicago, Jack Perry has first match in New Japan in Chicago in New Japan in Chicago and is met right. with ridiculous heat. Is Jack Perry riding CM Punk's coattails or is this all part of a bigger AEW work? No, he's taking advantage of the heat on his yeah, own 100%. because he knew 2K wasn't gonna fucking mm-hmm. do it because TK never capitalizes on good momentum or anything that he could turn into good momentum for his star. So Jack Perry, do you think, kid? No, no, no publicity is not as good as bad publicity. So ride that shit out, my guy. Right. Exactly. Yeah. Seth Rollins is taking time off after WrestleMania to give his knee a break. Um, the hope is he'll only be out about four weeks. I guess he banged up his knee really bad at Mania. I mean, he basically did three matches. Well, he had the surgery too, and that put him out, and then he had to come back for Mania. Yeah. Yeah. I heard that he's coming back a hill and that he may or may not have shaved his hair too. Uh, I also I've read that Becky's doing like a six week book tour, yeah. so they're going to be off TV while she does that. Mm-hmm. Um, so I mean, four to six weeks tracks with everything that I've heard. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, Honestly, I hope he. I would want to take off longer. <laughs> like nothing against Seth. Like I just think that man needs a vacation. <laughs> He's yeah, the workhorse. He like as seeing everything he did at Mania, you know, like at the, at, we've all seen the video where everybody picking him up and him and Cody talking, like. Take a break, buddy. We love you. Like, yeah. just no, you're no, you're not gonna come back, and people are gonna forget you. Tell you that. No, he'll right. come 100%. back, and that the roof will blow off. I gotta yeah. feel like the same argument we made about the Intercontinental Title and Gunther. Like, it wasn't a big deal because Seth no longer had the belt. Yeah. Right. Jack Perry returns to the side with the Young Bucks and Okada. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I think that's the plan. Sure, look made that look hard like that was the plan. Yes, sir. Mm-hmm. Uh, Daddy Meltzer asked around about if Stephanie McMahon is returning as WWE as a WWE executive now that Creepo Vince is seemingly gone for good. But nobody is directly answering the question. No confirmations or denials. Kitty cat, you gotta let go. I mean, who really that. cares, honestly? Like, <laughs> I mean, nothing against Stephanie, but like, I don't no. give a shit about her chief branding or any of that shit. All I right. want to know. If she's coming back to the ring, if she's gonna be a GM, if she's gonna be fucking lead yeah. a faction or some shit, I care more about that. I don't give a shit about her. Yeah, give Push her, her give her an on screen role. Like she's right. always done great. Work. Yeah, like no, I agree. I like, and I see. always love when she comes back and they're like, "You still got it," and she always comes back with like, "I never lost it." Like, right. you yeah. know. <laughs> so I would, honestly, I wouldn't mind her and Paul being the GMs of the shows. And battling and shit, like yeah, I think I, Paul. I would go for too, that. I think Paul has too much to do. To yeah, do it. You know, he's yeah, not gonna. No, work. no, no, not her husband, Paul. Paul Heyman. Uh, oh, 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 that would be great. The the chemistry between the between of them. Oh yeah, that would be fantastic. Oh, that would be lovely. Um, Matt Hardy is a free agent after his last AEW contract expired. <clears throat> Um, Fightful and Daddy Meltzer have confirmed, uh, both of whom also say Hardy has decided not, he decided not to sign the contract that they offered. Do you think we see the Hardys back in WWE? For a one-day contract to retire in WWE, maybe. Yeah. Yep. Um, Rebby, of course, made some sort of passive-aggressive, shady TikTok about it. About leaving because there wasn't going to be any money because Tony Khan well, didn't no, pay up. Somebody commented. <laughs> let, me, let me pull it. Somebody commented, and then she was like, "If I was here for the money, I would have left a long time ago." <laughs> <laughs> Hang on. Let me pull up what it said. Hang on. I, I'm a, I'm a Hardy, Hardy Boys. I have been for a long time. Like, I'm a he lifelong should've. Hardy Boy fan. And yeah, and what dad had a saying. He's from North Carolina. He's from Hardy Country, right there. You know, like, 
And he agrees. It's time to ride off into the sunset. They're going to reach yeah. a point very soon where they're doing more harm than good on right. their legacy. And I think the longer they continue to do subpar stuff, that the amount of subpar work will eventually catch up with the amount of amazing right. work you did younger in your career. Well, I've never, I've been done with them for a long time. I almost lost my black wrestling car because Jeff Hardy is literally black people's <laughs> Hulk Hogan. Like, <laughs> like, like y'all laughing, but I'm being dead serious. Like, no, 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 he's Twitter, right. That's awesome. wrestling say Twitter that. almost murdered me because I said, fuck him. Cause like, he's got too many chances. He's got too many damn, like I'm a recovering <laughs> addict. Like, if you want to get better, you'll get better. And this guy's been given opportunity after opportunity for him to fuck up and take opportunities away from other wrestlers that could have got those. So, like, for me, I've been done with them. Like you said, they're tarnishing their legs. Not so much Matt. I think Matt definitely has a place, like, as an agent or even a booker somewhere. Hire, let Tony hire him. Like, the dude has ideas. Like, yeah, he's great at marketing produce. him. But me personally, like, I'm like, I'm like with uh, in the chat when he said, let the motherfuckers ride off into the sunset. And yeah. as and as and as a uh, as someone that has uh, sang in bands before, Dad Hat, I agree, Jeff, brother, yeah, my brother, come on. <laughs> Can anybody pronounce his band's name? By the way, <laughs> I nope. Uh -uh. Yeah, so it Perkins says Somali. Is that what? Is that oh my God. Like that? <laughs> That's our little white song. Yeah. Oh, okay. Painkillers and cocaine, bro. Right, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Her heroin and Hennessy, is that what it is? <laughs> 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 yep. Tone deaf Jeff Hardy. Uh here's here's the TikTok. Um it says packing my bags after the money runs out because AEW forgot to renew Matt's contract. Like she was kidding. And then um Somebody comment, commented and said the fact that people think that's the only reason you're with him. She said, it ain't enough money to be the only reason. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, she's and the then, wife of a wrestler. She would know. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And then uh, somebody else tweeted or somebody else like commented and said he will end up with Lita. And she uh, she replied in like. Uh, made a funny TikTok. She's like, come get him, girl. I'm tired. <laughs> <laughs> That's one thing about her. Like, I love how she gives them shit. And like, like and she is at their throat more than any disgruntled fan could ever be. And that's how you know that's real love. And that bitch ain't there for no money or anything like that. She no. loves that motherfucker and ain't going nowhere. Yeah, and right. she makes her own money. Like, she does yep. a lot of things that people don't realize. Like, she right. designs uh, pinball games. Yeah, and I just found she, that out the other day. Yeah, That's she cool. just, yeah, she designs pinball games. She's got a couple of like clothing lines. Um, I thought she did somebody. She did a couple of the girls at uh, GCW's last paper. She did some of their gear too. I heard. Yeah, she yeah. does gear for sure. I she know does that. Gear. Yeah. Um, she does a lot of stuff for the Hardy. She does a lot of conventions. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Her Gothic baby do them. Her brother. Gothic baby. Yep. I follow Gothic baby. I think that shit's hilarious. Yeah, like they wrote a book. Oh, like there's yeah. a like Gothic Baby has clothing now. Like it's real cute. Uh, Matt put out a TikTok that said a while ago that said like the baby actually gets recognized more than he does. <laughs> Respect. Well, someone's like, aren't you Gothic Baby's dad? <laughs> Not the 14 time tag team champion, future <laughs> Hall of Famer. Right. Like as a dad, that's probably more. It, that probably makes him feel better than somebody I'm recognizing sure. yeah. him as a 14 time. Oh, yeah. <laughs> You're, you're for your you to be as famous as you are and your kid to be more famous Outside, than you. That's oh, a yeah. win. That's a win. Probably brings a tear to his eye every time somebody says it, honestly. Listen, all three of those kids are going to be wrestling. For sure. Uh, yep. Uh, Drew McIntyre is still telling those close to them, Kim, that he hasn't signed a new WWE deal. Uh, he remains factored into the company's plans as WWE is confident They'll retain McIntyre and become, and it it has become common for stars to wait until just before their contract expire to ink new ones. This is going to be the same, Kevin. Kevin always saying like nobody. He's he's done the independent route. He sees what's out there. He doesn't want to go wrestle in AEW where everybody comes up to his nutsack. Like he's he's got to reach out. <laughs> yeah. Let's see. I think I have another one about contracts. I like the fact that WWE's brought, they've said themselves, 
they've made a public statement that with TKO being in charge of contracts, their contract negotiations and the way they're done are going to be totally different than they've ever been done anyways. Yeah. Right. So some of these guys, Becky said it in her mo- one of her most recent interviews. She said that she's never had the weight on a contract. And they're saying it's not a matter of that we don't want you. It's just now they have a totally different set of bosses they've got to run stuff through before they right. can get contracts approved. Right. Totally different legal departments and all the underwriting and everything that goes through. TKO and Endeavor are the ones that are taking care of that now, not just WWE. Well, they're not on that. You're just not worrying about wrestling. They still got fighters and other fucking contracts and stuff. They have that. Mm-hmm probably would take president or probably had to work on two on top of that. So it's like, you're part of a much larger company now. So like that doesn't surprise me. Either. Uh, Scouts, were you talking about all these stocks that were up and sold to where uh VKM is pretty much. Well, no, maybe there were some other changes. Oh. Um, as for why so many WWE contracts are approaching expiration without a new deal being reached. Fightful says that several talent are pointing the finger at former EVP of talent Dan Venturelli. Ooh, he just bounced. Who was fired yeah. by WWE this week. For what it's worth, PW Insider notes that Venturelli was considered a Nick Khan slash Paul Levesque guy internally. Um, hmm. Natalia's contract is set to expire. Uh, Drew's is up. Seth's is up. Becky's up. Finn Balor is up. Someone's contract will slip through, slip through the contract, slip through the cracks eventually. I don't think so. You don't think it will? You think it's solid sealed, baby? <laughs> you think they didn't latex over it? I think, like you said, it comes back down to doing things differently. So, like, what my I'm I'm a, everything with this TKO stuff and all this other things. Like, it's like I'm waiting and see because even if everybody's gonna have to make adjustments, AW side and WWE's because AEW now can't jump on things to sign people and things like that. So I, I feel like the landscape, everybody coming up now, it's kind of like a hard reset. We kind of have to go wait for these next ones to come before we kind of figure out how this is going to be in the new landscape of TKO being TKO. a thing now. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, when WWE returns to Madison Square Garden for the June 28th SmackDown, Wrestle Ticks reports that they will be using smaller stage setups like they used this week for Raw after WrestleMania in Philadelphia. PW Insider adds that the setups will be the new normal moving forward as a way to roll back certain aspects of production in favor of packing more fans into the arena. Um, they've also said that they're going to be getting rid of like the augmented reality before... Uh, like when the wrestlers come out, they're going to save those for like special occasions and do it at WrestleMania. And they're going to be reducing the amount of like production. Like they're going to reduce like down a production truck and just make make their setup more fan friendly. It's going to be gonna, NXT Black and Gold. I want to go last on this one, so everybody have your piece because I've got a, a TED talk. I think it's just Triple H circling the wagons and locking yep. some things down and making it a more intimate wrestling setting. Like, yeah, we're mm-hmm. finally we're getting his stamp on the business, and that was his main thing with NXT was the aesthetics, light, lo- low lights in the crowd, more light focus on the wrestling, more l- less graphics, and more focuses on the in ring material. So, like for me, like I keep saying, Alice. Allison fucking will y'all tell the goat, our Lord and Savior Triple H. I told you eventually <laughs> he's gonna make all this over in his image. You just gotta give him that chance now, especially now he's got yeah, some real, yeah. real money behind him and he gets to really make those decisions. Like everything the, the wrestling landscape has changed the Paul Levesque era. We're gonna look back on this and be like, what the fuck were we watching before that? Yeah, oh, yeah. 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 You know, yeah, I I'm, I'm in favor of all of it, honestly. Mm-hmm. So Cause like I, it was funny because again, like my wife doesn't watch WWE much, but like sometimes those like the the 3D graphics that they use are cool. But like the Roman Reigns one, I it's I so still weird. was like, can you guys go back? Like, did what's like student at what art school did you have to do this? Like, <laughs> you guys have money for this? It looks like trash. I'm sorry, it looks like oh, trash. No. Every time I saw it, I was like, this looks bad. It looks bad. It looks terrible. It and most of the time, weird. I feel like those those overlays are bad. But the one they did for. Uh, I'm trying to remember 
Uh, I can't even remember. Anyway, so, uh, but yeah, like most of the time they just look bad. They just look like something that somebody tried to do in the 90s and was probably cool then. And then just tried to bring it back and now that they have like better, everything's in HD. And it just to me, like, again, just bad. I'm glad they're getting rid of that, at least for, you know, non-pay-per-views or, you know, PLEs. Yeah, like the Judgment Day looks cool, yeah. but yeah. yeah. Roman That's what I was thinking of Judgment Day. It's weird because it's like you basically like see the crotch. <laughs> yeah. like, and then it's like this weird like bronze Roman reigns. Like yeah. it's like bizarre. It's yeah. Like, I don't like, like a statue yeah. come to life. Yeah. yeah like like, like I got it during the pandemic era and shit, but like now yeah. like, it's focus on the wrestlers. Like I yes. like something yeah. it's a little distracting too. And sometimes yeah. it like it doesn't even make sense, like the fucking birds and shit on Matt Riddles and stuff. <laughs> right. Like, come on, like, man. Like I remember the Oscar one being cool. Like it was like with all the, the masks. masks. Yeah, yeah, the yeah, masks, yeah. That one's that one's awesome. Ray has like another that. cool They're one with the masks. They're still gonna do them yeah. for like WrestleMania and like bigger right. shows, right. but it's going that to makes be sense. very. Maybe it'll be something awesome. different every show yeah. too, and not yeah. just the mm-hmm. same fucking thing. Yep, yeah, getting time to actually like create new ones for each of like yeah. the big four. Exactly. Mm-hmm. My yeah. big takeaway is and it's not necessarily in this headline either though is that you remember everybody talked about when vince was at the helm they had their list of forbidden words they weren't allowed to say wrestlers or wrestling or pro wrestling they weren't allowed to say title or strap or belt and a lot of these things are getting x'd off that list And Triple H, this is crucial to me, and I say this often, and I'll always say it. The most important thing about a live wrestling show is putting asses in seats. You know what I mean? It's your gate. Your TV show about your wrestling show? Exactly. It's because of Triple H. I know. I know, RN. I know. (laughs) The gate is the most important part of the wrestling show because the fans in that environment are an equal proponent of the story being told the fans the ref the workers you know the live production all of it so when you start gearing your live production to be more towards your home audience than your in-house live attendance audience it starts to become a tv show about pro wrestling and the crowd is just a bunch of extras well now so what you're saying is it kind of takes a team effort for everyone to win is that what is that it's what almost like it's a sport, Aaron. You're right. Yeah. Okay. I, I, you see, I, I thought that's you see what, what I did saying, there? Right? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I, I thought that's what you were saying, but I wanted to I, make sure. I feel like Triple H is bringing it back to the core. Not that WWE will ever go back to being just a pro wrestling company with a capital right. never R. Say you know? Never say never. But they're definitely going back more towards that old school feel of how a pro wrestling show is put on and produced and managed. And I love that. That's what I'm excited about with some of these toning back, going into Madison Square Garden and putting 15 or 16,000 asses in seats and them all chanting and woeing and everything that's going to go into that. That's the mecca of pro wrestling. And the fact that they're going there and going, we don't want a big production. We want to go to a smaller one so we can have more fans be a part of this experience. That's important. Yeah. And I feel like for a long time, the live attendance and the fans in presence were kind of put to the side. So them bringing fans back to the forefront. Chef's kiss. Way to go, Papa H. Our Lord and Savior. <laughs> Daddy trips. Yeah. Daddy trips. Lord. Uh, Mick Foley said that he's no longer planning to have one last death match on his 60th birthday next year after Thank he God. recently suffered a concussion without even realizing it. Fully oh think it may have happened during one of his preliminary training sessions. Jesus Christ. Uh, Mick, th- thank God you've come to your senses. Yeah. I'm okay with that. I'm okay with him not having a last match. We love you, Mick. Don't do that, please. You, you need to do nothing. You have You have done everything that you needed to do just keep being Santa Claus, Mick. Yes. Just please keep being Santa. That's all we need in this world. The fact that he can remember his name is a miracle in itself. Like, just sit down, bro. Just sit down. Yeah. yeah. Collect a check. Sit down and yeah, collect a check. You're fine. Yeah. Um, I will say I do love him on the treasure show because he is yes. on that. I know we're talking oh, about yeah. it before. Oh, yes. <laughs> I love that show, but like Mick Mick Foley holds a like super special place in my heart. 
-hmm. And so, like, he, he just, he can never do any wrong. Um, according to S.E. Scoops, AEW star Nepotism Ken Hook is interested in exploring his options in free agency once his contract with AEW expires later this year. WWE is expected to have interest in signing him. Please, God, no. He's going to go to NXT and get dog walked. <laughs> That's all they're going to do. They're going to be like, oh, you're Taz's kid? Let's fucking bury right. Stretching. 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 Put, him with Dem- <laughs> put him with Charlie Dempsey and just be like, stretch him. Uh-huh. It's it's pop him so like a rubber band. <laughs> yeah. I love Hook. I see, I see the potential there. Like, yeah, I think it would be great in the next season. If they, if I they humbly disagree. Place. I mean, uh, I'd be interested to see what he would do out from under the thumb of his father. Yeah, that's, that's a good idea. Out of true. just out of AEW, and that you know, like you're saying, being a nepotism hire right. essentially, and being in a position he is there, you know, they keep trying to talk about him like he's going to be the next, you know, AEW world champ. And I'm like, it's, he's not there yet. Like he, the, he's got potential, but dude is green and he still needs, he's got a lot of work to do. That's what I'm saying. Like yeah. NXT, they'll put some pounds on him for one. Yep. They'll put him on an actual like workout regimen, mm-hmm. nutritionist and all that. He gets to be around people his own age, yeah. his own level of greenness. Like you said, training, best trainers in the world, best in-ring trainers yep. in the world, best TV training in the world. Like, to me, if I was Taz, I would already served him up on a fucking silver platter to Triple H a long time ago if he was yeah. smart. For sure. Yeah. Uh, Fightful mentioned that Drew Gulak was pulled from several appearances over WrestleMania weekend as a result of Ronda Rousey's accusation of Ronda Rousey accusing him of inappropriate contact backstage at WWE. This includes Drew being removed from his seat at the Hall of Fame after a producer noticed he was in attendance and in close proximity to someone close to Ronda Rousey's inner circle of friends. In addition to that, there are no creative plans for Gulak right now. Breaks my heart. Piece of shit. What did he do? Um, Rhonda said that he like grabbed at her, like in her no no square. Fucking fight she yourself. said that he grabbed her drawstring of her pants, yeah. and he said he went in to shake her hand and grazed it. And grazed it. And uh, he's saying he immediately apologized, and she's saying the apology came much, much later. Well, supposedly there's more women coming out with stuff about him too, and that's why they end yeah. up taking him Oof. off in the oh, scene. Really? Yeah. Oh. I think I'm never, ever, 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 ever going to say that a woman shouldn't feel like when she's ready to speak up, she shouldn't. Because one thousand percent, when it's time for a woman to speak up about something that happened, do it mm-hmm. one million yep. percent, no matter what. Yep. Yep. But that doesn't mean. That we can go to guilty without proven innocence just because. You know what I mean? There is due process in this country. I am by no means taking up for these monsters, but we can't put everybody into a guilty chair on these kind of accusations. And also, too, with things like this, like what a woman feels makes her uncomfortable is not the same with a guy. Like, no man Mm -hmm. in here is going to be like, oh, fuck. If a woman or a dude accidentally swipe past him, whatever, like, damn, bro, what's wrong with you, bro? That's my. I might right be you know the most saying? homoerotic person on the planet. Hey, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, I openly talk about kissing Bo regularly. Like, that's what, and that's that's my thing too. Is like, it could. I hate to say it this way, but it could be a little bit of both. Like, it could be he didn't think it was a big deal and like he apologized, but it also could be that it made her uncomfortable, whether it was a little thing or not. And that's why. Yeah. With some of these things, it's like a like you said, it's like a slippery slope, and like it's hard to like. For me, it's hard to get on both sides because first, of all, if we have proven, like I said, I was on the same side. Like I don't know, the stories are similar, but not at the same time. So it could have been a misunderstanding. But then I've heard that there's more people that can't that are coming out, or that it's not a like. It's a thing that's been known that he may have may have been inappropriate of, of other times. So then that's why I'm like. Mm. There's smoke, there's fire. 
Yeah. I mean, that's why Brock's gone right now. Right. Mm -hmm. So, uh, my last thing, and this is kind of just like a, a mention, you know, because I like to mention these things for curiosity. Earlier this week, AEW star Chris Jericho filed trademarks for the phrases the learning tree. <laughs> The Educator <laughs> and oh the Rarified Air of Jericho. Like Air A-I-R. Like. Go away, <laughs> Chris. They all sound terrible. I just, just hate that I hate Chris Jericho. Is that like I it's like yeah, that, I mean I, I'll just leave it at that. Like I hate that I hate Chris Jericho. I feel like I just said something about staying in the game too long and the amount of shitty work you do starts to outweigh the amount of great work you did earlier in your career. Yeah. <laughs> to, yeah. to steal a phrase from the Deadlock podcast, that gimmick is going to be dog shit taco. Dog shit taco. <laughs> no, no, dog shit you. taco. No, thank you. No, thank you, Chris. Just go do another Fozzie album that no one's going to yeah. listen to. True. And Go hang out with your weird wife. <laughs> if she's not at a rally, so I was just yeah. if she's not at another insurrection. If she's not part of any insurrections. <laughs> um, I've got one before we sign off and go home. Uh, this was sent to me from AJ on Instagram, and I did my due diligence. Uh, Eric Redbeard, Eric Rowan, has pulled out of independent promotions and bookings, one of which posted that said that he has other contractual obligations mm. now. So I did some digging and I went to, I hate saying this, but I have to, I went to one of my sources. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> it looks like he might be heading back to WWE. Do we think Eric Redbeard might be involved in, in or part of all of these new Uncle Howdy teases because they referenced the point of bringing in a faction in the documentary and about how there were people that wanted to be a part of it. Do we think Eric Redbeard might be coming back to WWE now? Yes, sir. Fucking yes. I hope so. Absolutely, yes. If you watch the documentary, yes. <laughs> I, I want him to come back. I feel that he deserves it. It's due time. Mm -hmm. And I feel like maybe Bo wants to work with Eric and Braun. Yep. Like honest, they, knew, I, they knew his, they were real close with Bray. So I wouldn't mind Eric coming back and joining the Viking Raiders, man. That'd be you cool. What? The three of them that, fucking together, destroying mm -hmm. shit. That would be fucking, it would give the Viking Raiders a little bump, or, and he could take over for uh, Ivar until he gets back. And yes. Yeah, just imagine that. the three of them as a faction fucking just destroying fucking people. Yep. Uh, yeah. Alexa has uh, started working out. Yeah, she'll be back shortly. She's made public statements about it that she's training again. So that's cool. I would be all about she, it. She just just started. It's going to be a few months. Right. I love I love it. Bringing it back. Give them a faction. Let them roll with it. Mm -hmm. I think Eric. I agree with Scouse. Uh, Scouse said that's the only place that would prevent him from working the Indies. So that does make sense that he's going yeah. and getting confirmation that it looks like he's Connecticut bound. I would only assume that he's going to be part of that, whatever the new Uncle Howdy uh, gimmick is going to be. I and a lot of go, oh, go ahead. I was, no, go you ahead. go ahead. Mine's a different thought. I was going to say we sleep on how good Bo really was, and that yep. when all those these yeah. guys are coming back to wrestle, who was the person that helped them get get back in shape? Mm -hmm. yep. yep. Just a quick final thought. With everything that's been going on with AEW and what have you, they said like talent's not really happy about a lot of things. Do we feel like we're going to start seeing a mass exodus of the old WWE talent that left because of Vince and are going to start trickling back in with Triple H? I mean, we have seen a lot already, but do we yeah. think, We'll see Adam Cole come back. Do you think yes. we'll see oh, Brian Danielson come yes. back? Probably not Brian Danielson because he's going to retire. But. Yes, absolutely yes. All the yeses in the fucking world, yes. I, I think people like, you know, probably, I don't know, maybe Adam Cole. The other part of that, I think if he does go over there, I'm hoping, honestly, he brings Brett because uh, yeah. I don't know what the fuck happened uh, with Britt Baker. Uh, I miss her. 
like her and Thunder Rosa's like, you know, carried the women's division heavily yeah. for a while, especially during the pandemic. And, you know, um, and then I, but I think like people like Moxley, Brian Danielson, you know, all those guys, they're, they are where they want to be, you know, like they're doing their thing. They already did their stint in WWE. They made the money that they made there. And now they're wrestling all over the world and being, you know, the top guys that top guys where they want to be. And just, you know, even if they have a strap or not, they don't care. They're, they're loving what they're doing. Yeah. And I, honestly, I don't even care about those top guys. I'm in more like FTR, Undisputed Era, all these guys that Miro, Miro, Def, I can see Miro going. First That's one to go all. back, in my opinion, first one to go back, Keith Lee. Yeah, Keith I can see Lee. Keith Lee 100%. Yeah, because his yep. wife. Yeah. Yep. Um, gotta do, gotta be not even that, people keep forgetting all these dudes that they dropped were all Triple H's guys. Yeah, all that they have guys. propped up at NXT yeah. that they couldn't fucking figure out what to do with on the main yeah. roster. That's yep. true. They're going to come home. Why would you yeah. not come home when somebody, mm-hmm. when the guy that brought you to the dance and made you able to go to these other places, why would you not come back and try and be under Yeah. Because look at the landscape of WWE right now. Look yeah. at all the champions, all the main and upper, upper mid-class guys. Who are they? Yeah. All the NXT yep. holds and Triple yep. H guys. All yeah, them. they're all Triple Every H people. Single one. From fucking uh, uh, Damien to fucking... Uh, <laughs> What, Cody's probably the only one it is, but Edward, Gunther, Sammy, yep. all these dudes, KO, KO, yeah, all these people are Triple H's guys that he's went to war with, that he's went to bat for, that he propped up and put on a national stage. So, Bailey, like said, EO, Bailey, Hello. Dakota, everybody, yeah. all of them. the whole roster, pretty much right now, the whole fucking roster. So to me, like you said, Keith Lee, I'm hoping Swerve eventually because I know he's never. He's going to get the title, but it'll probably be fucking 12, 12 months from now sometime. Probably be winter is coming I or some see, shit I don't next know year. if Swerve was come, would come back because, like, they did him real dirty. Yeah. Like, Vince yeah. did him dirty, and Bruce Pritchard running SmackDown did him dirty. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but Bruce Pritchard is still there. But he's not running it. Yeah, that's consultant. the big difference. We'll yeah. see. We'll see. Uh, Mox definitely will never. No, no. no hell never. no. No. Never. I, I Never. can't. I can't bleed all the time. Fuck no, baby. <laughs> I'm gonna be in Japan. Mm-hmm. Yeah. No. Uh, but uh, Alex, what you were saying, like the thing with Burt Baker. Uh, Burt Baker is uh, very much hated in that women's locker room. Uh, they say she's a bully. It's either one way or the other. Like you either love Brit and you're one of her friends in that inner mm. circle, or you're one of the ladies fighting to get into Brit's inner circle. Uh, That's pretty isn't much that the case with every top top man or woman in, in any fucking promotion. For the most part, but apparently Brit's turned it up to eleven a little bit. I'm not in the locker room, so I'm just speculating yeah. on the things that I've heard, of course. Yeah. But I've heard that she uh it's she was she was put on a pedestal being the first woman to be signed. She was kind of their Ric Flair in a lot of ways. Like okay. or, I don't know, maybe the, they're Shawn Michaels, maybe even though yeah. it's a dick, they still if you perform your yeah. number one, sometimes you get a little perk here and there. Yeah. yeah, she's made several comments on Twitter about it. Like people are asked, like, where is she? She's like, Well, apparently I'm a bully, and blah blah blah. I mean, she has been injured. Um, but like yeah, I mean, a lot of people don't really want to work with her. I think if she was to come to WWE, she would need to be humbled some. Oh, 100%, yeah. And she like, would be. And that's another thing with the AAA stuff. Like, that's just not existing. Like, yeah. if you either you come in and you fucking bend the knee or you don't. Like, there's, you know what I'm saying? That's just it. Like, there's no room. It's almost like a sport. There's no I and what? Team. Team. <laughs> oh, there's a me, there though. Is a, there is a me. Yeah. Yeah, but is it though? It's T E A N. Yeah. And if you spell it backwards, it's meat. Meat. <laughs> meat. Meat slapping meat. Uh-huh. Meaty men slapping meat. <laughs> All right, guys. It's my favorite favorite 90 minutes of the week because I get to hang out with my friends and talk about wrestling. Uh, before we go, I'm going to have everybody plug their socials, tell everybody where to find you. Alex, you're the noob, fresh fish, first night on the job. Tell everybody where to find you and what you got going on over on TikTok and everywhere else you got stuff. Well, first off, I want to say thanks for having me, uh, reaching out. Uh, well, you know, especially you, Will. Like, I, 
we I vibe with your stuff so much. But uh, find me. It's just wrestling and uh, coffee uh, on all the social medias. I'm on like Twitter, Instagram, but I'm mostly just mostly active on TikTok. Let's go, RN. You're next. Uh, well, you can find us at Smacked Raw Pod on on all your socials. You can find me personally at Mister Eight Nine Eighty Four, um, A R A Eight Nine Eighty Four on uh, Instagram. Check out the re- Rewind. We record every Thursday nights. Next day on uh, YouTube and everywhere else podcasts can be found. Also follow my kennel, Route Four Kennel on IG and Facebook. Um, and yeah, everybody on the panel, like you guys want to shoot an invite for me to join your shows and always an open invitation to join us as well. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, this is a dope show. Like it's been a little while since I've been on. I appreciate you guys giving me an invite and my, my family, my brother and sister from another, you know, how, you know how it goes. I love you guys. Love you, Bubba. Always. Husky, you're up. You can find me on TikTok at Husky Roads 912. If you want to hear what I'm listening to while I'm at the gym, you can follow me on Instagram at the Husky Roads. I have a Twitter, but I never use it. You can follow me there at the Husky Roads underscore. Uh, I make electronic music under the name Dormir. I have I'm working on a follow up to my last release, Miami Nights. You can also find me Mondays on the World Championship Records YouTube page with myself, the Tribal Queen Bree Stout, and the Wrestling Encyclopedia Michael Michael Duplessis for Queen's Court, where we are reviewing Monday Night Raw from the very beginning to current day. Uh, this coming Saturday, I believe, at 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, we are going to be doing a live watch along of SummerSlam '94. Uh, so if you want to, cool. if, you're bored, if you're bored on uh, Saturday, come hang out with us. Uh, see Bree's first reaction to Taker versus Taker. So that's going to be fun. <laughs> um, but yeah, that's basically all I have for you guys. Bo, yo, you can. I'm going to make it short, sweet, and to the point. I hear every Sunday for Bot Spots and Chair Shots. Every Saturday for over on YouTube at YouTube slash Boyfriend Time Podcast for Boyfriend Time. Anywhere else, follow me on Twitter at Jacksbo2020. Hit the link tree. You can find links to all my shenanigans in my merch. Ow. You can find me on TikTok, Instagram, and Twitter at Just a Girl918. Uh, thank you to the Matt Ritter. For my newest figure, I have with Gray now. Yes. That's uh, awesome. Yeah. With Huskus. With Huskus. Uh, so I will be doing a new comic soon to, to add him in. So be on the lookout only on our Patreon, which you can subscribe to. Uh, we'll, we'll give you that information. Okay, just to double check. Alex, RN, Husky, Bo, Al. I got everybody, right? Yes, sir. Yes. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, this is the uh, the part where everybody starts hanging out and they're like, oh, shit, he's going to talk real fast. Remember to follow us anywhere you do anything on the internet, Facebook, Instagram, iHeartRadio. You've got all the options, options, botch bots, and share shots. In the Twitch link below you, you have a couple of links. One is for the Discord. It's your direct link to all the hosts and producers of Rivet City Radio and Off the Top Media. Right below that is the one for my spread shirt. That is your botch bots and share shots and Off the Top Media merch. Most importantly... There are two options. One, Amazon Prime. If you have Amazon Prime, you get a free Prime gaming subscription. You go onto your computer, you give it to us, give it to Smacked Raw, give it to Wrestling and Coffee, give it to Rest World Championship Wreckage, give it to Creation World, give it to any of my friends. As long as Jeff Bezos doesn't get it, he has too much money. The absolute lifeblood of Rivet City Radio is the patreon.com slash Rivet City Radio. You get ad-free playback of all the shows. You get the Up and Smoke Cinema Club watch-alongs. You get my personal delicious as fuck recipe book. All of the news, articles, and blogs starting at $2 a month. It's cheaper than subscribing on Twitch or on YouTube. Guys, that's it. It was a great, I love, like I said, my favorite 90 minutes of the week. Um you guys got anything for the class before I talk real fast? Uh, no. Thank you for the mm-hmm. sub, Nicole. As I'm doing it, seven months on Twitch. Thank subscribing. you. Nicole. Thank you, Nicole. Seven months. You ready? Hit him. But. <laughs> Thank you.
Now, as we close another episode of Botch Pods and Share Shots, I want to take a minute. Thank you for listening. Remind you to go wherever you do anything on the internet. Like, follow, subscribe, unsubscribe, and subscribe again. Leave a comment telling me that Alex is really cool. He's definitely coming back. I miss RN, and Husky's just pretty fucking cool. Just I love him. Either way, it helps the algorithm and helps find new listeners. If you feel really generous to be one of the VIP people, head over to patreon.com and donate to the Rivet City Radio Podcast Network. You get some fantastic swag. We get some fantastic guests. It's a win-win for the Ginger Ninja Jacks Bow Wrestling and Coffee. Alex for the Boss Bitch Al, Huskus McChungus, and our boy RN from Smacked Raw. I am the Will Gray. Thanks for stopping by and listening, my people. Bye-bye. Sure.